understanding coefficient of variation. Here's the actual calculation. But it's basically the standard deviation divided by the mean squared. Since no one remembers statistical classes from college, or had to suffer through them. Here's a very simple example of standard deviation. Or how spread out are they a set of numbers. Here are 20 random values ranging from 2 to 12. Step one is we calculate a mean or average. In this case, it's seven. Step two, we subtract the value from the mean and then square the difference. So for the first example in column B, it's nine minus seven squared, which gets us four. Step three, we calculate the mean of these differences and then square it. And step four, we calculate the square root of this mean of differences squared. Bonus for the coefficient of variance, you just need to divide the standard deviation that we just calculated by the mean squared, which gets us 7%. Again, we are measuring how erratic actual sales were. More erratic generally means that it's harder to forecast. Sometimes some examples are more useful. Here we have an example of the coefficient of variance being zero because there is a constant adjusted actuals for 52 weeks of 100. In the second example, the coefficient of variance is 48%. We generated this with just having a random number between 100 and 700 for 52 weeks. And then finally, in this third example, we had a coefficient of variance of 96%. This is a random value. This is a random value between 100 and a random value on top of it of 100 to 2,000 for 52 weeks. So in other words, the upper bound was randomized as well as the, the value itself, if that makes sense. Myth number one, Z items based on COV are unmanageable. What if you sold 1,000 in the first week and then 100 in the next 51 weeks? you would still consider the demand to be forecastable at 100 per week since the last 51 weeks you've sold 100. But for COV calculations, the value would actually be quite high. Here you can see the COV in this case is 105%. So it's a constant adjusted actuals for 52 weeks except the first week of 1,000. And although this might sound like a theoretical example, this could easily happen if you were launching a new product. It's called filling the supply chain. But going back to this example, Even with the randomness of that example, and even with the most basic statistical model, a simple average, you would end up with a forecast error of 76%. Which you might consider quite high But in fact, from an inventory perspective, 
you would only need 16.8 days of stock to cover a 90% service level. That might sound like a ton of inventory to many. But again, we are dealing with a highly erratic product. You may decide due to its erratic nature that you would lower the service level. If instead of 90% service, you plan for 80%. which would lower your required days of stock to 10.6. Just something to think about when setting days of stock values. So how do we use this COV in IVP? We segment products into X, Y, or Z based sometimes on their coefficient of variance. In our example, we have if the co coefficient of variance is less than 50%, it's an X item. If it's between 50 and 100%, it's a Y item. And if it's over 100% COV, then it's a Z item. Myth number two, coefficient of variance is the best way to segment XYZ products. COV is just looking at the actual history. That's not the same thing as forecast error. Which compares actual sales to consensus demand. So you could have a product that is easily forecastable by you, for example, an X item. Maybe you have a customer that gives you a very good point of sale data. But for a COV, it's quite high. It would be a Z item. So right now, as of this video, we are still using COV for XYZ since it's easy to use and pretty stable. Forecast error uses flags and that takes time to develop and stabilize once you go live. But we anticipate moving from COB to forecast error for XYZ in the near future. Thanks for watching Practical IBP. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow along in the next playlist in the bottom right.